People see Victoria as the iconic image, a lot older, in black very often, and quite stern, which once you begin to read her diaries and once you begin to really uncover who she was, she's not that person that people visualize and see. And I, and I don't think there's been, apart from the young Victoria, there's not really anything that I've seen that explores her early life and that kind of vitality that she had and that lust for life. It's shocking to think she was 18 on the day that she became queen. If that was me as an 18-year-old girl, I, I think I would have been like, goodness, yes, I am too unprepared, mother. Please take care of me. This is not a game. In future, you must be accompanied by your mother or me. You think the queen should walk in a certain way and talk in a certain way, but then you read things about her. The Privy Council described her as when she laughs, her mouth goes as wide as it possibly can. At dinner, she gobbles her food before anybody else has time to even kind of get onto the third mouthful. I have not yet finished. The queen has it, Highness. You're trying to play this impulsive young girl that's full of passion and vitality squeezed into the role of queen. And it's those two things always battling each other and fighting each other and, and finding times where she should be carrying herself with a deportment, but actually she's got a temper on her and she just wants to scream and forget all of that. I do not need you to tell me what to think, Albert. Even as a child, her high tempers are written about a lot and, it, and it's kind of one of her faults. It's one of the things I, I love about her is, is that she's just extremely hasty and passionate. You cannot lecture me anymore, Sir John. I will not listen to you.